Hi everyone, my name is Dion and today I will be performing the assessment of the head, the face, and the neck. The equipment I have prepared are the following. Clean gloves. I am going to use this to palpate the head, the hair, and lesions if there are any. Face mask. This is to protect me and the patient from any contagious diseases. Tape measure. I am going to use this to measure the circumference of the patient's head. Ruler. I am going to use this to measure the palpebral fissure vertically and horizontally. Stethoscope. In case there is any enlargement, I am going to use this to auscultate or hear the brute sound. So for the special test, I will be using the following. A piece of paper to check if there are tremors, which is a sign of hyperthyroidism and a glass of water to assess the thyroid. Comfortable the way you are? Do you need to use the comfort room? No. Okay. I'm okay. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna start off by asking you a couple of questions. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Do you smoke, Mrs. Duque? No. Have you ever smoked? No, not at all. Okay. Um. Do you experience any um, difficulty in swallowing? None whatsoever. Any problems with your head, face, or neck? Um, difficulty moving your head or neck? None. Okay. In the past, did you ever have any injuries in your head, face, or neck? Like lumps or lesions? None at all. Does your family have any cancer in the head or in the neck? Um, my late grandfather, uh, he had uh, cancer of the throat. Mrs. Duque, yes. what are your physical activities that you do? Um, I usually use the elliptical uh, exerciser. Because it's so hard nowadays to get out of the house if I take a walk. So this is the best way to, as an option. And then after, after my exercising, I rest for a while and I prepare breakfast. Yes. Do you do any stretching before exercise? Ah, yes, 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 I do. Okay. Bending and stretching my my arms. Okay. And then I I do a little uh, feet exercising. You know, the not not so heavy exercise. Okay. Um, since you mentioned exercising, do you follow safety precautions to avoid injury? Yes, I do. I do that because it's so hard at my age. Let us now proceed to the assessment of your head, 
face and neck. This procedure would inform us of your head, face, and neck condition and any unusual findings would be followed up with a focused assessment. Alright? Okay. So from time to time, I'm going to give you simple commands and you should follow them. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, these commands are just easy. Okay. Okay, let us start off by inspecting your head. Looking at your head, it is erect mm -hmm. and positioned on neck at midline. Mm -hmm. And observing it, it is round and appropriate for your body size. And we call that normal cephalic. Mm -hmm. Now, is it okay if I touch your head? Sure. So let me measure your head. I'm gonna place this just above the eyebrows and it is wait. It is fifty-seven centimeters, mm -hmm. which is normal for a woman. And again, we call that normal cephalic. Okay, so I'm gonna start assessing your head. Your head has no dandruff nor lice. It has no lesions, no scars, and no scaly texture. Now, I'm going to start palpating your head. And what I'm checking for here is any lumps, indentations, depressions, tenderness, and swelling. Does anything hurt? No, none of it. How about here? No, not so ever. Okay, good. So everything is normal, no tenderness, no swelling, no depressions, no indentations, and no lumps. Now we are going to proceed to the inspection of the hair. Mrs. Duque, mind if I touch your hair? Sure. Okay, so hair is thin. It is naturally white. And it is shiny and smooth to touch. And there are no evidences of patchy alopecia. For a 70-year-old, you have good growth of hair. And there is a balding here in the top area. But it is normal for an aged person. Balding of the crown area and the temple area is also normal for an agent. Now let's proceed to the assessment of your face. So to check the symmetry of your face, I'm going to start from top to bottom. So the eyebrows first. Both are symmetrical. It is equal on both the left side and the right side. While for the eyes, both are symmetrical as well. Mrs. Duque, could you take off your glasses for me? Thank you. You're welcome. Can you close your eyes? Okay, so the eyes are still symmetrical when eyes are closed. Could you take, could you open? Okay, thank you. Now, I'm going to measure your palpebral fissure between the eyelids. So for the right eye, Vertically, it is 10 millimeters, and horizontally, it is 30 millimeters. While for the left eye, it is 
10 millimeters and horizontally it is 30 millimeters as well so both measurements are equal both left and right which is normal so for an agent eyelids can look wrinkled and loose because of less elastin and collagen soft soft bulges under the eyes are also normal for an agent now mrs duke could you take off your mask for me can you please smile okay so the nasal labial folds are present and both are symmetrical now everything from top to bottom when smiling everything is symmetrical as well okay so any drooping of any side is a sign of bell's palsy or possibly a stroke so for mrs duque there are no drooping of any side there is no drooping of any sides and it is normal Okay, now I'm going to look at your eyes. Can you please look straight at anything behind me? Okay, so the sclera is not visible above the iris, which is normal, and the presence of it is a sign of hyperthyroidism. Now I'm going to the side to check if there is any bulging. Okay, there is no bulging of the eyes or exophthalmos, which is normal. Now, Mrs. Duque, I want your eyes to follow my finger, okay? This is to check the lid lag or the static situation of the upper eyelid. Okay, so for Mrs. Duque, there is no lid lag, which is normal. And the presence of it is a sign of hyperthyroidism. Next is neck inspection. Now stay still and I'm going to look at your neck closely. Okay, so looking at your neck, there is no erythema. There is no scars, no lesions, and no masses, and no goiter. Now, Mrs. Duque, can you please take off your mask for me? Okay. Can you please take a sip of this water? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that test, I observed for any movement of masses upon swallowing. So in her case, there are no movements of masses upon swallowing. Now, can you please stick out your tongue? Okay, so again, I am observing for any movement of masses. And since there are no movements of masses, she has no thyroid gland masses and since there is no upward movement she has no thyroglossal cyst so everything is normal next is neck palpation or thyroid palpation so before palpating make sure that your fingernails are short and clean there to avoid hurting the patient Okay, so Mrs. Duque, can you please make sure that you are in a relaxed position? Mm. Okay, so first I'm gonna palpate the thyroid cartilage or the Adam's apple. Okay, then just below the Adam's apple or the thyroid cartilage is the cricoid cartilage. Okay, so... As I move downward, I'll reach the isthmus of the thyroid. And then, 
Mrs. Duquet, can you please take a sip of this water? Okay, there is no isthmus enlargement or the there is no enlargement here in the isthmus of the thyroid. Okay, now I'm gonna start palpating each thyroid lobe. So, Mrs. Duque, can you please put your ear near to your shoulder? There. Okay. So I'm good. First, I'm going to palpate the right thyroid lobe here. As I push it, as I push this, I'm palpating the right thyroid lobe, and it is not enlarged which is normal well for the left thyroid lobe okay now i'm gonna palpate it and push it push it using this these fingers okay so there is no left thyroid enlargement as well which is normal okay there is another way of palpating the thyroid lobes I'm going to put my thumbs behind the sternocleidomastoid and then use my index finger and the middle finger to palpate it okay there is no enlargement and I'm using I'm doing circular motion to palpate the thyroid properly okay mrs duke can you please take a sip of this water once more okay there is no enlargement of both thyroid lobes as well as i palpate while mrs duke swallowed i also did not notice any asymmetry so both left and right thyroid lobes are symmetrical which is normal now i'm going to check for tracheal deviation so here i'm checking if her trachea is straight and it is midline okay so for mrs duque she has a well-positioned trachea and her trachea is aligned she has no tracheal deviation and it is normal okay so for mrs duque i will not auscultate her thyroid since there are no enlargements if there are enlargements the examiner will hear brute sound which are often caused by graves disease and graves disease is the rapid increase of blood supply when the thyroid enlarges mm -hmm. now i'm going to palpate the lymph nodes okay so in palpating i will use my finger pads and palpate it in circular motion so the area that is palpated should be relaxed as possible so first is the preauricular lymph node there next is the postauricular lymph node just behind the the ear now i'm going to palpate the occipital lymph node here in the occipital area After occipital lymph node is the tonsillar lymph node. Right over here. There, palpating it in a circular motion. Next is the submandibular lymph node over here. Okay. Okay. Next is the submental. Then, the superficial cervical node, right over here. Mm -hmm. 
Then the posterior cervical node here in the nape area. So I'm palpating it in circular motion. Next is the deep chain cervical nodes a long way over here, here, and here. Again. Okay, so after the deep chain cervical lymph node, I will palpate the supraclavicular node here in the clavicle area, near the clavicle area. Okay. Okay, so for Mrs. Duque, there is no palpable lymph node, which is normal. So any palpable lymph node is considered enlarged. If there is enlargement of the lymph node, we should pay attention to its consistency, mobility, tenderness, and erythema in the affected node. Okay, so the assessment is done. Thank you very much, Mrs. Duque. You're welcome.